buckle up. Because it's going to be a long ride. It's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> no one cares, but we're going to tell you anyways. This is popcorn chats. Who is in the litter box, though? Quiet on the set, hoes. Do you not have the energy to No, I do, I do. Okay. I do. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Popcorn Chats. I'm Katie. And I'm McKay. And this week, we're talking about a brand new film. I don't know if you've heard about this franchise, but it's, it's kind of like an indie franchise. Yeah. Kind of small. Yeah, not really well known. Um, it's called Fast and Furious. We're covering the ninth film in this extensive franchise. It's technically the tenth film, but it is number nine. Okay. Did I ask? <laughs> <laughs> if you are fans of the pod, you guys know that Michaela likes these movies. I tolerate them. And we like covering movies like that that one of us... That we have very different opinions on. Yeah, because so often we have such similar views and it's just us being like, oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. Mm -hmm. But, you know... Sometimes it's nice to have an equal balance where one of us is one way and the other one is the other. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we went. <laughs> so we went back to the. We made our triumphant return to the theater as a duo. I don't as a think duo. we've been to the theater together since. Dude, not I since don't COVID. Even know. Yeah, it's been a long ass it's time. Been a long time. Since I brought my little notebook into the dark theater to try and scribble some notes. But we did it, and we're here, and we're going to try to decipher these as a team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wrote over some of mine, so I don't know. And I don't really have, we don't have any, like, cohesive thought. Oh, no. I mean, we're fresh off the watch. Yeah. You've, this was the second time you saw second it. Second time. But I, we literally just exited the theater, and now we're here recording, so. Yes. Cute. But that's how good film reviews maybe go. Probably not. You probably should we'll take see. some time to like collect yourself. Mm -hmm. But um, we say send it. I had a good time though watching this. I will say I'm I surprised <laughs> because I didn't feel that. <laughs> I will say I didn't yawn one time. Yeah. Can you start? I can't. I don't I don't know what to say. I okay. don't want to be a bitch. <laughs> So I think with these films, maybe I should just explain my mindset for someone who doesn't like these or someone like Katie who watched this and you had to suspend your disbelief too much for this one, which like we'll get into that. This is a very like nostalgic franchise. I first saw it was Fast Five in theaters. That was like the first one that I saw and I was instantly hooked. I will watch whatever this franchise makes. Like I'm one of those kind of fans with this franchise. However, I can acknowledge that we have gone a little downhill, Vin Diesel, in my personal opinion. I mean, I think they're done at 10. They've like talked that they were doing eight, nine, 10, and then it was gonna be done. And you know, I agree with that decision. Normally I would be like, give me as much as you want and I'll take it, but I think we can kind of call it good at 10, although I'll be very sad when it does. I will also say it's not like a complete garbage movie. We always bring it no. back to the original garbage movie the kissing booth <laughs> it's not all bad like there are some good moments well and i think it's like it's enjoyable to watch yeah and even like it is satisfying for somebody like me even even though i haven't grown up with this i have seen all the m movies now basically no minus a few <laughs> <laughs> minus like three <laughs> That's Actually, four. <laughs> Give or four. take a few films. I've seen them all, and I feel connected to this La Familia. Okay. I mean, I can appreciate that. And I can appreciate some other things, too. So, yeah. We can get into it. Mm -hmm. The magnets in this. I liked the magnets. I liked it, too. It, it was a fun element. I like yeah. how... I might be getting ahead of myself here. But I like how there's always... They hit their marks in each of the films. Yeah. There's always something in the end race, heist, getaway. Mm -hmm. Like in that one, I don't remember what number it was, but when they were dragging that block through. Five, when they were dragging a block through the yards. Yep. And then there's always something. This time it was the magnets. I appreciated the magnets. I like that they always learn a lesson from the things that are used against them. And then in the final scene either use that to their advantage or they know how to take that out. So like in five, they knew that the police were gonna be an obstacle. So they 
got police cars and then went undercover a few of them in the police cars and then in six they had the little go-kart and the little like chip things and they learned how to override those by their technology and i forget what paul paul walker like went off the back of the go-kart like they do that kind of stuff where they like you see them get down with something like the magnet in this movie it didn't necessarily work with them in the first scene but then by the end they had mastered it do not jump on that lamp <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They are very fascinated with the ceiling fans. Check-in this week is canceled. Do you Please have something to say? Get the fuck out of this shot. <laughs> He's cute. He's just sitting like a nice boy. Why can you yell and raise your voice at him, but I can't say, get the fuck out of the shot in a nice, calm way? He's not going to understand that. Well, no, I'm not scolding you for yelling at him, but why can't he be in the shot? Because this is our show. <laughs> But he looks cute. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. No check-in because we, our lives are the same and any new developments aren't even good or fun. Fair. Fucking tragic. All right. Fast nine. Should we just start by trying to decipher? The notes? Okay. So I think I've got some of mine. Um, I do just want to say I liked this opening flashback. Yeah. I did enjoy that. Um, I did think towards the the very last one between Jacob and Dom, like cute, but also at that point I was kind of over it. I was like, not it was needed. too many flashbacks. Yeah, but needed. the opening flash or the opening flashback was, I thought, great. Yeah, and I liked the part where we got to see him like beat the, the man. reason why he was in jail mm-hmm. and the reason why he beat that man. Yeah. Yeah. And I also thought all the actors looked a lot like their Younger selves. I love the girl who played them. young Letty. Yes. Whoa. A plus. Whoa. Yeah. I was like, damn. And I liked seeing that, you know, like that they yeah. all grew up together in that little reminder. A young Vince. The Vince looked so much like grown up Vince too. And I thought they cast young Dom extremely well. Like the voice, yeah. the mannerisms. I think that was trained probably. Yeah. You gotta was, get that down. It was so good. The young John Cena, did he have a huge growth spurt at the age of like 18? <laughs> <laughs> Some fucking steroids involved in that transition. Um, I didn't think he was that great. Um, but I also don't think John Cena is that great. So it didn't really matter. He's like the rock for me. Yeah. Like it's just like, I don't give a fuck about you no bro and like good for you for having an acting career yeah but like but i'm not a fan stop trying to make me one like it's always the guys that it's just like okay fine do whatever you want they're shoving them down our throats yeah james corden the rock john cena all of these motherfuckers can do whatever the fuck they want, but yeah. why do they have to pop up in every other thing? No. No, thank you. Like, why? Hollywood just gives them all too many chances. And it's like, please leave my television screen and my movie screen. I don't want to see you anymore. I did. I don't miss The Rock in this one. Like, no. This is the first one that he's not in because he's in eight. But then him and Shaw go and do the spinoff and Hobbs and Shaw. And I did not like that movie at all. I think it's because The Rock was the main focus in that. And I didn't miss him. No, I didn't miss him. I didn't even realize he was gone until we just started talking about this. Yeah. Bye. Okay. (laughs) Should I just read my notes? Because I feel like that's funny. Okay, go for it. My first note is physics be damned. And I don't know what that was referencing, but it could have been a number of things. It was when they were in space, Ludacris said like the numbers don't, or like physics don't lie. No, when I, this was the first note that I wrote of the entire film. Then how the fuck? Physics be damned was probably. Oh, Oh, I know what it was about. (laughs) The bridge falling and they're driving on a fucking donkey and Shrek. I know it was donkey and Trying to escape from the dragon. Absolutely not. No. The car, how much, how much does a car weigh? A lot. And this flimsy ass, toothpick ass little bridge. She crumbling. Yeah. And then the bridge should be out by then. Like you've done enough with the bridge, okay? You already tried to pull the wool over my eyes. I'm not an idiot. Mm -hmm. That bridge would not be able to hold the car up while half of it is falling. (laughs) No. But then they go back to the bridge and have Dom slingshot up. My other note on here is slingshot? (laughs) Question mark. How did he just like hook it to a tube on the bottom of the car? He hooked it into his Can tire. you guys tell that I don't know anything about cars? He hooked it into the tire. If if I had to guess how much a car weighed, wouldn't know a thing. And that's why. Heavy. 
<laughs> but I know that this shit is impossible. Yeah. And the way that they slammed into the boulder then, my note from that was chiropractor. <laughs> yeah. I was like, How much do they pay in chiropractor bills a year? Because their necks and backs have got to be so fucked from those car accidents. Yeah. Like, they didn't have any sort of helmet on. I'm watching that, and I'm in pain. There's so many things. Like, when the car is literally spinning, and he's just running through the spinning car to get out. Yeah. And, and then he just gets in the driver's seat and corrects it as it's... Like, and also, they blew up the bottom of that earlier. You can't <laughs> do that. This ton... I That, I know, is at least a ton, because it was multiple tanks hooked to one another. And it was spinning. Yeah. Wait creates greater velocity when it's spinning. I know this, okay? I know I'm not the brightest fucking bulb, but I know this. That that's not possible. That that's not fucking possible. Because he ran through a movie car. Tell me, I mean, I don't give a fuck. I know they're not superheroes, okay? If this were a superhero movie, then maybe I could get Like it when the this. dude gets the sign that smacks the back of him and he just still yeah. stands there. I'm like, I get it that you're yeah. on steroids, but like, yeah. you're not Superman. Yeah, and John Cena like carried Vin Diesel through a fucking cinder block. <laughs> Beam. <laughs> And then, did you notice Vin Diesel, when he pulled the chains, he collapsed everything? Yes! I was like, is this Hulk 3? What franchise are we in? You can tell that men wrote this script. Because they're like, what can we make us do that makes us feel, like, so fucking cool? Yeah, and then they're like, so this super strong Michelin man on steroids and crack cocaine just yanked down this whole thing. But then... The girlfriend that is a third of his size don't jumps into the water and saves this fat ass man. He's got to weigh so much. Muscle weighs more than fat. So if he's strong enough to yank all that down, don't fucking tell me. Well, you know what? Don't doubt my bitch Letty. Because Letty can do all. We if, don't even get if to Dom, see the if struggle. Dom, if Dom can do that, she can pull him out of the water. Okay? I'm believing that. That's her superpower. Okay. She can be just but as super strong as him. We don't get to see that. I would have at least liked to see her power swim up <laughs> with him. Because if we had to see him yank cinder blocks off of the sky, then I think we should be able to see Letty have her badass moments. She did have more badass moments, but the fight scene with L or whatever. Yeah, that was cool because I'm like, yes, get Jordana Brewster back in this action. So actually, can we, can I kind of like digress here for a moment? So I want to talk about the setup of Jacob and like his introduction and like how that was brought in. I'm not necessarily sold still on Dom and Mia having some secret brother that we never knew about, like especially when family is so important to Dom. Like I get I get it that he thought that Jacob had killed his dad. So I get that he was like, get out of here. But also like over and over, family is the most important thing. So then for Dom and Mia to both turn their backs on him, that seems a little far-fetched, but we're going to believe it. Okay, fine. We're believing it. The main reason that I actually ended up liking it in the end, because I think it is, is the only logical way to bring Jordana Brewster's character back in yeah. without Paul Walker. Yeah. Because I missed her in yeah. 8. And she's like, she's one of the OGs. I don't feel like it was right for her character to be gone, but I also don't know how they would have done that right off the tails of seven to bring her into eight. Mm -hmm. So I liked that they brought her back and I thought that this made sense. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I, I think that was, it it wasn't horrible. You know, I was expecting a lot worse from John Cena, but it wasn't horrible. Yeah. I, I think if they would have maybe gotten a different actor, I would have sold me a little bit more. I don't know. I just, I don't really see John John Cena as like a good actor. I don't look at him on screen and think like, Oh, his character. I -hmm. look at him on screen and think like John Cena. Yeah. I just didn't like, like, you don't need more meatheads right. on here. I'm sorry, John Cena. But get right. your paycheck. Yeah, I just have the bridge, the plane, slingshot. I did really like early on in the film when Letty got in Dom's car through the window. I know. When he saved her off the bike. Yeah. I'm like, I want to climb through my car like that just to go to Starbucks. The way she did it was just very, like, I wish I could do that, mm-hmm. you know? Did you like the choice of having Letty on a motorcycle in the first I did scene? because it fits her. I don't know. I'm still not like sold on it. I get that then it looks kind of different. Like then you have, you have the motorcycle, then you have Dom's car, then you got like the big Jeep and then you got the tanks. Like I get it. It's like size wise. It makes sense kind of. But they kind of treat cars like mattresses to land on. Have you noticed that? Yeah. That it's kind of like, how many times is Letty going to fly through the air and end up on the hood? Like, I get it. That's a callback to six. 
thank you for that. I appreciate those little moments, but I don't know. I don't know if I loved her on a bike. I think I just, I'm used to seeing her in a car. And I don't know if I love that choice. I thought that early on it seemed like they were setting up Letty's character to have more of a conflict with, like, choosing this life and feeling called to this life. And then there's this kid that's, like, her lover's but not hers. And she loves the... Were you about to make fun of me? (laughs) It sounded like you were about to say her... (laughs) It sounded like you were about to say horse. I don't know how that came out. <laughs> Sorry, I tripped on my back. Not horse. <laughs> Can't have one moment. Can't have one off but moment. But you knew that you were, that it sounded like that, so that's why you stopped. No, I saw your face and I knew that you were about to say something. So Just go said, say it. I said it. It sounded like you were about to say horse <laughs> instead of her lover. <laughs> The kid is her lover's and not hers. Yes. So she's conflicted, and I feel like that conflict kind of fizzled out, Mm -hmm. which is fine, but I think they could have leaned into that a bit more. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I thought that her being on the bike was kind of her, like, being reckless. Mm -hmm. And when she was like, I'll take point, or I'll take lead, or whatever, like, she's the most exposed. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of was expecting more pushback from Dom the whole time being like her her kind of like pushing the boundaries and wanting to take more risks and him being like we have to be safe and him not taking as many risks and stuff Mm -hmm. but then he like does the thing with the cinder blocks yanking down to like save them all at the end like that would have been good if they had more of like a conflict between the two of them yeah instead of all these fucking sexually tense looks that they just share the whole time like it would make their relationship deeper if we had some conflict in this so I do live for those looks, but I get what you're saying. I like that Dom kind of learned his lesson from four when he was like, I can't protect you anymore. Like you need to stay behind and left her. And then she died, not died, whatever. And ever since then, he's never been like, oh, we need to protect Letty. Like he lets her stand up on her own. And I mean, I'm applauding him for doing the bare fucking minimum mm-hmm. for being like, thank you for letting Letty be out there being the bad bitch that she is. And that's not even something for him to be applauded for but I do just like that there's never a time where Dom is like this is too dangerous for you yeah you know that she's like I'm gonna be on this dirt bike and go and also in that scene those those army men have like stormtrooper aim yeah (laughs) yeah yeah Tyrese what is his uh Rome Roman no Tej yep Roman (laughs) when Roman is like surrounded and he just shoots around in a circle. And like, takes out all of them. All on his own. I was like, just do something else. Like, have the floor b- break through and he finds a tunnel to escape. Yeah. Why you gotta be doing all that? I do at least like that this one was self-aware. Yeah. But then after that, and then when he, like, almost, he landed on the landmine and then was still alive. But they were like, how are you still alive? I felt the self-awareness in this one more than in, in, more than in any of they the others. They needed that scene with the three of them where he was like... How do we keep surviving? Yeah, I agree. Thank you for that. Yeah. But then you put them in space. <laughs> you know it's fucked, so why do you keep doing it? Yeah, and here's you the thing. You didn't need to do all that. I remember this interview from fucking years ago of them joking about going to space. Like, not even within the past, like, year when they were making this movie. Like, co- I'm talking, like, college years ago. Like, I remember being in the dorms. And because that was shortly after seven came out, they had announced eight, nine and 10, their plans for that. And someone was like, are you guys going to go to outer space? Like, what can you keep doing? And they were like, oh, ha ha. So now what are they going to do? Moon racing? Here's the thing. I could have bought into the space thing if it would have been like a drone, you know, and if they would have been like, you know how Charlize Theron at the end was in the like little fake thing and controlling a drone. If they would have done that. Like, I could have at least kind of bought that. I've been like, okay, they're controlling, like, a rocket. Yeah, or it would have been funny if we thought that they actually were in space and then yeah. they, like, step out and they're like, ooh. Yeah. Like that. But the fact that they're in these fucking scuba suits. Mm-hmm. And they keep taking it a step further. They get into space in a car, mm-hmm. fucking sedan. Mm-hmm. Are we at the space? Are we talking about space now? We're talking. I mean, we might as well. Our notes have no organization in this episode. Then their suicide mission for a sec, they decide to ram into a satellite with their sedan and miraculously survive that. But then 
they're like, oh, we got to flag down these astronauts in the International Space Station, so let's get out of the sedan that somehow is protecting us from space hazards, and they're not combusting. Yeah. Oh, and here's the thing with that moment, too. There's, like, the dramatic music, and they're like, we can at least go out this way. With this franchise now, there really is no fear of your characters no. ever being in actual peril. So I think that's kind of taken away an element of it. Like, I think the last time that I ever felt like, oh, shit, these characters could actually really die was in six. Like, I think past that point... Like seven, eight, and Hobbs and Shaw. I was like, of course they're gonna live because yeah. they all live, except in seven, because no one knew how they were gonna write out Paul Walker's character. So I was right. on the lookout for that. But now it's like you just know they're not gonna kill anyone. And yeah. watching that, I'm like, they have one movie left. Like they're not gonna kill them before the last movie. Yeah. Or they're gonna kill them and then they're gonna be living out in space with aliens and be like, oh, it's a long story. We somehow survived with the yeah. Martians. Yeah, same with that scene with Dom where he it's supposed to be this dramatic moment of him falling in the water and like having these like life flashbacks. It's I'm just like, okay, so get to the part where he's going to be fine because we know that this man isn't going to die. Wish yeah. he would because like we love character death. Yeah. And it's needed in this long of a franchise, at least Grey's Anatomy. You got to find a balance. Mm -hmm. Grey's Anatomy knows no bounds. With character death. Whereas these motherfuckers, no, no bounds. Bringing character back. survival. Yeah. The only one, I mean, we'll get into Han because I want to talk about that. But I was really happy when they brought Letty's character back because Letty has been my bitch from day one. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I can excuse it once. Yeah. But at this point now, I'm so like everyone's still alive that if Giselle... Is not back in 10 fucking rioting. Yeah. Because why That's not? That's the precedent like you she, set. She needs to come back now for this last one. If you brought Han back, who was killed off in like 2004. I mean, granted, then he was in 5, 6, and 7. but Or no, he was just in 5 and 6. And then his funeral was in 7. If Giselle doesn't come back, Vin Diesel, I'm coming after you. Because why? It's, it's, she, she can't be dead. Yeah at this point like no one is so i think that that's taken away that element of like heart pounding moments because yeah. like now in all of these fight sequences and chase sequences it's like everyone's gonna be fine yeah it's so like why am i getting pressed no need no need to stress no does she shit in the box <laughs> i had that same question <laughs> where does Do she they pee? let her come out and like do her hair, makeup, and shower, and there she's in biz business casual. <laughs> yeah, you know, as a prisoner in uh -huh. a box. Her makeup looks great. Here's the problem, Charlize. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my problem. You know, you're just like too pretty when you still look good with that mushroom yes. cut hairdo. Like yeah. she still looks good. She does. When it looks like just someone tipped a bowl upside down on her head and was like, that's good. Snip, snip. Why is she even in that box? Because she's very dangerous. <laughs> okay. I don't even want to get into that. I just want to know, does she get breaks from the box? Clearly she does because she's very well put together. Mm -hmm. Or she has a team that comes into the box. She has a glam squad that shows up. Yeah, because whenever they're, she's like ready to go and ready to talk smooth. But yeah. in real life circumstances, you would be hiding your shit in the corner. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine trying to like intimidate the, your captors with your fucking shit in the corner? You haven't showered in days. At least you have this really <laughs> stupid bowl cut that you don't really have to style. But she's like, she's probably using her shit for eyeliner. <laughs> And mascara. I don't know how she does it, but damn, women always find a way. Yeah. And she she's a fun villain to watch. I don't Is she though. Okay, but here's the thing. Not for me. I don't She's in a box. <laughs> and then she's in a drone. She's in a flight simulator. You missed out on her Nate. Because I, you got yeah. her out and about, Nate. I will just say her conversations, like, she is more fun to me than any of the male villains because she is much, she's way smarter than all of them, first of all. Yeah. And she's way more manipulative. So she's enticing to watch when she's, like, got her thing turned on. Yeah. You know? Okay. Where the men, when they're talking, they're like, I'm going to blow you up. 
It's yeah. like, okay, pop I'm off, gonna sir. kill you. Yeah, where like she's like, uh, jokes on you, buddy, nobody dies. Yeah, where she's like, I write your second grade report card, bitch. I know everything about you. She does her research. She and came prepared. And I mean, she's going to get the longest arch of a villain out of any of them because she's going to pop back up in 10, I bet. Yeah, when she was like, <laughs> you look like you need a hug. And who was the one who had the best roast of them all? Who was like, you Toretto's make yourselves the hero in all of your own stories. The guy that killed Dom's dad. <laughs> yeah. He had a really great point. He said, you Toretto's make yourselves the hero in all your stories. And you keep going around and around in this stupid same story over and over again. I'm like, yeah, true. Thank you for bringing that up. Dominic Tretto has an ego problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if there were a man who just knew that he was in a movie, it'd be him. He's kind of like the bulky Adam (laughs) Sandler. (laughs) Now that is probably one of the truest things I've ever said. Because do you understand that? Yes, I do. Thank you. And I know your distaste for... It's problematic, (laughs) and they must be stopped. This is why you should all vote for me as president and governor of Hollywood, so that I can put an end to the white man, producer, actor, separate church and state. Uh, Vin Diesel identifies as a person of color. I retract (laughs) my previous statement that... Vin Diesel is a white man, but he passes as a white man. Because he said, so he's of ambiguous ethnic, Jesus Christ, ambiguous ethnicity because his mother is English, German, and Scottish, and he's never met his biological father. I'm pretty sure he's, like, he's not just, like, a white man. Okay. So, <laughs> you just make sure to read. <laughs> I will Don't mark that. that. And then, like, they had the audacity to say, as long as we obey the laws of physics, that's when I turned to you and I was like, we can go. That's the only law that they've ever followed. And they don't even follow that. They don't. My first note in this was physics be damned. And then they had the the audacity to bring physics into this. You lost the right to bring up physics after you had a slingshot made out of a bridge that Donkey and Shrek tried to cross after they slayed the dragon. Thank you. Next. Did you notice that the bad guy's haircut kind of looked like Greg's from The Bachelor? Mm-hmm. I didn't find him that bad. No. I, like I kind him. of actually enjoyed him because he played into his role and he mm-hmm. was like, yeah, I'm a rich, spoiled prick. Yeah. And he's like, we rule the world. And I'm like, you're not wrong. Another self-aware moment. Yeah. I think I want fat, you know, we're talking about where they're going to take Fast and Furious 10. Mm-hmm. I want, don't read it. <laughs> not, I'm looking at your water bottle, I swear to God. I want... Fast and Furious 10 to be about an insurance company that comes after this squad to kill them all because of <laughs> all of the money that they've cost them. Because of all the property Car damage. insurance, They're just like getting the shit people. absolutely kicked out of them. Like they're cornered. Like it's like that moment in Toy Story 3 where it's like, guys, I think this is actually the end. Like we're going to mm-hmm. die. And they're like, who the fuck are you? Liberty Mutual, bitch. <laughs> That's the end. Um, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> because they've cost liberty, so much. Liberty, liberty. <laughs> they've cost so much in property damage, so much in personal health insurance, so much in car insurance. Can you imagine being sucked up by a magnet? You're just trying to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> You're walking. Your belt. That is sucked <laughs> off you. That would really just be something that would happen to us. Yeah. Ramsey, Roman, and Tej are really giving me thruple vibes. Yeah. At the beginning of this. When they all roll up together, they're always together. She's too good for both of them. But mm-hmm. Dorian, get down. No. Mia being back. Also, we need more women back. Thank you very much. And I loved that Letty and Mia went on the mission together. Yeah. Because from the beginning, even though Letty and Mia have supposedly grown up together, been besties since the beginning, we don't really get a lot of Mia and Letty ever together. Yeah. Because in four, Mia's not around and then Letty's dead. And in the first one, there's so much focus on like Letty and Dom and Letty and Vince. And then, like, Mia and Brian and Mia and Vince. Like, there's not really 
a lot of Letty and Mia. So I liked getting them going off together. And I like they had a conversation of being like, Letty, you're not really like happy in your new life, are you? Taking care of little Brian and how she's like, I was just about to remember myself or I was just starting to remember myself. And then I got taken away from everything that I finally remembered. And I really liked that. It was an honest moment for Letty's character. And I just want more of Letty all the time. I think if there were ever to be any more spinoffs, I'd love to see like a Letty spinoff. I don't know how that would work without Dom because obviously he'd have to come along with. I say I really like that one-on-one. -on -one. Me too. The landmines. I actually kind of liked that. I thought that was cool. Something kind of different. However, another suspending your disbelief. Roman's tank speedometer. He's like, it only goes up to 70, but he was going like a solid 50. Mm -hmm. I miss the street races. And I know people have said this since like five, basically, that people miss the street yeah. races that it was in the beginning. And the only street race that we get in this one is between Dom and Jacob when they're kids, mm -hmm. which, okay, I like that. I get that that moment's important. And obviously we like the younger versions of everyone else, but I just, I wanted like a street race as grown ups, or else like Dom and Jacob racing like as grown ups again. Yeah. Or or just get Letty back in the fucking wheel. Letty and Mia, let Mia drive. I just, I missed the good old fashioned street race. Agreed. I really liked Ramsey driving. Misande. She was my favorite character and that was my stand up scene. <laughs> oh yeah, we didn't do that. I really like Ramsey's character. I like how she's like, that's not what I do in this group. Like, that's not what I'm here for. She looks so good. In yeah. This. The braids, the shades. The shades. A moment. The moment. The lip. Nailed it. On point. Her Smashed. eyebrows. She has great eyebrows. Just the whole outfit. She had a perfect chain necklace set on. I love the look and I would do dirty things for that one. I think so many people were looking great in this because I think Ramsey Masande was looking great. Michelle Rodriguez's haircut. Mm-hmm. I have such a crush on Michelle Rodriguez and I have for years and it's not going anywhere. I like the cut. I like the cut. I just like her. And then the other person who's just looking great, Han, love the haircut. I love your flow. Yeah. I will for all I will always love that look, but I thought he looked really hot. He looks good hair both too. ways, I would yeah. say. I don't know if I could necessarily choose because I think he looks really good both. He can ways. pull off both. Yeah. So I think between him, Letty, and Ramsey, hot across the board. Yeah, and then young Dom was a stand Young for Dom me. was hot. Yeah. Except at the end, another reason why that last little moment his ass him, crack. His hairy ass crack, and then you could also see the hair coming out from, like, up here, and that's just an automatic turn up. So yeah. yeah. You gotta be hairless. Yep. For, <laughs> to keep the love alive. But I did, yeah, I thought there were a lot of A-plus lookers. And I mean, Jordana Brewster just always brings it. She, like, hasn't aged. No. Love you, queen. The thing that I feel like with this movie, in particular, even over eight, seven predecessors this one was like character development who yeah we're just gonna be about plot and i don't love that because so much of this franchise was built on this found family trope which i love in books i love in movies i love a found family it's like so much of the movies the previous movies is on that and on these characters as a family especially in like five i feel like one in five are like the fucking standouts for them in this one it was just kind of like everyone's separated everyone's doing their own thing they're never like really all together just vibing and enjoying each other except for the very end and I just missed that family focus and that character focus yeah. for so much plot that it's like, I don't necessarily need that much of that. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's important. You have to be, like, interested in what's going on. The character wasn't there. I agree. And I think you can't just be like, family is who you choose, not necessarily your blood. You can't just say that. Like, mm -hmm. show us. Yeah. Show us why Jacob is different to Dom than these other people who have had his back the whole time. Like, I kind of wish Jacob would have abandoned Dom rather than Dom abandoning Jacob. Because it would have made more sense. 
about like Dom is all about family and like being there for your family. So it really doesn't vibe with that aspect of Dom's character. Like Mm -hmm. family is the most important thing. And then also it would have been nice to see why Jacob is different to Dom. Yeah. Than say like Letty or these people who he considers family. A positive from the movie, all the cameos and bringing people back. They are really gearing up for 10 because they brought back Leo and Santos. They brought back Leo and Santos. Again, we haven't seen them in the last couple movies. And obviously Han coming back. But then you had Nastasiak. Like his little moment and with his nose still being so fucked, it's like Brian left his impact. I don't even remember what his name is, but the dude from Tokyo Drift and then Bow Wow, Twinkie, bringing them back. Because I really like Tokyo Drift. Actually, after seeing it again, I'm like, this is, I like this one a lot. I mean, Helen Mirren. Yeah, I loved that cameo, Cardi B. Okay, so we have had three, like, female pop star rapper cameos in these. We've had Rita Ora in six, then we had Iggy Azalea in seven. We didn't have one in eight, not that I can recall. And then we had Cardi B. Which was your favorite? I liked Cardi B. Me too. I didn't think that she was too distracting. No, she was fun. She... Added to the plot, too. Yeah. She was a needed character. A necessary character. (laughs) Agreed. One that Rita and Iggy were not. Iggy Iggy easy to biggie to be is dressing at the good. And couldn't name one Rita or a song. (laughs) (laughs) I just hope that obviously in 10, the last one that I'm hoping for is Miss Giselle to come back. (laughs) Giselle! There were a lot of Star Wars references in this. Yeah. Like that whole Star Wars conversation. And then also did the Dom tumbling down, it felt very Darth Maul from Phantom Menace in the tunnel. And the fact that they just went to space. Yeah. A lot of Star Wars references. Don't really know what's going on. Interesting. That conversation felt a little weird. It was... It didn't, like, flow. It felt... It, like, took you out of the moment. It really did. It took me out. Also, don't say in a movie like this, if this were a movie... Don't say that in any movie, period, but especially not something like this. Yeah. Okay, the ending with Paul Walker's car throwing... Or showing up. Little tear. Mm Mm-hmm. Beautiful. I really like that. And they left the empty chair for him. I like that they're still giving him nods, and that kind of leads into my final point of why... This movie overall, while I liked it, I'm not trying to shit. I feel like I shit on this movie a lot. Like, I think I just bring you down. Sorry. Well, no, no, I don't think you are. There are like a lot of things that I found that I didn't like in it, but overall, I did really like it and I enjoyed it. But it's not going to rank high up in my rankings of the franchise overall. Okay. And here's where I think this one, you really, it like it, it really went downhill. There's no heart in it. In in eight. There was obviously, like, a presence missing in that one, but so much of it, like, it was just a darker movie because, like, they said that the cast and, like, creators of it were in a darker place coming back and doing this without Paul Walker, and you felt his absence in that, but you also felt, like, almost mourning alongside them a bit in that movie and, like, missing Paul Walker's character, and in this one, there's just no heart anymore with the film there's like I said you're missing that like family connection that is so big and like yes you can tell individual characters have chemistry like the thruple have chemistry and Dom and Letty have chemistry and Mia and Dom have chemistry and then bringing Han back into the mix but even Han felt a little disconnected in this because I think without Giselle like there's something they're missing eight obviously missed Paul Walker's absence but I felt like this one missed it more and you could just tell that there was a hole there. Like, yeah, there are lighthearted moments with, like, Roman and Tej mostly. Like, they bring some of the comedy. But so much of that was also Paul Walker's character. Mm -hmm. And not having that, you could just tell that in this one it was really lacking. And I felt like... And I just feel like moving forward, even for 10, I'm hoping that they bring it back more to the family and focus more on, like, the family connection. But I just worry without Paul Walker there that we're never gonna get that, like, just innate joy on screen back. Yeah. Because in seven, there was still that. But eight, there was really none. But there wasn't really supposed to be any. Where in this, I felt like they were trying to get it back. And it didn't work. Yeah. I didn't think so. Yeah, you can't just throw a cute little kid in there and be like, family. And I I really think it was a missed opportunity. I think they should have leaned in more to, like, Letty's character feeling conflicted. Mm-hmm. And Dom feeling 
her confliction as well. And like Mm -hmm. then at the end, that moment with her and little Brian would have been so much more sweet and tender Mm -hmm. for her to be like talking to him about his mom and racing with him and enjoying this moment of Mm -hmm. like, oh, maybe we could have both. I like that they didn't domesticate her. Right. But then, but I also, because that would have never been true for Letty's character. But I do think you're totally right that they really missed an opportunity to create more of a struggle with her character, which I think again, you can kind of tell that it's written by men because like men don't want to sit around an action film and like watch a woman struggle with her place with a child like you, you're missing you're missing an opportunity here to really give Letty just as much of an arc as like Dom Dom is pretty much the only character who's gotten an arc in the past two films yeah like well, eight was completely Dom focused and nine was also completely Dom yeah. focused and I mean like I'm not mad at that because he's always kind of been the main character I'm gonna put that in quotes because him and Paul Walker were like neck and neck and then obviously now without Paul Walker it's kind of like okay well we'll focus on Dom but like you have this whole host of characters mm-hmm. and then when Dom asks Letty he's like do you miss the life and she just responds back to you it's yeah. like, I want to hear your answer, Letty. I want to hear you explain your feelings. Like how when we were talking in High School Musical, the musical, the show, how when you're like the best friend, you're like, ask her about her day. And yeah. we want to hear it. I feel that way with Letty. I'm like, yeah. can we hear this? Yeah. When the ensemble is just serving the main mm-hmm. character, it's like so painfully obvious. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing too. There was another opportunity to see more of Letty being shocked about Jacob being back because Letty grew up with them. Yeah. Like that was also her friend just as much as it's right. Dom and Mia's brother. So again, there just was more opportunity there. I get it. At this point, it's kind of like, are you going to really explore like Ramsey's character more? Like, no, you don't really have time for that. She kind of had her bit in seven. And now I think she's more of like a supporting role. But I think like Dom, Mia, Letty, even like I'll throw in Roman and Tej at this point, more focus on their character developments. I mean, preferably Letty, but... Why do Roman and Tesh need to always be the comedic relief? Like, why can't anyone else do it? Yeah. Dom has always been serious. I think because, like, Paul Walker was always extra comedic relief. And now, like, they don't have another person for that. But even Letty used to have moments. And Letty's, like, so serious now, too. She was so serious in this movie. Mm hmm. And it made sense for her to be serious in eight because Dom, obviously, like they thought, betrayed them all. But, and also this final fight sequence, I felt like really felt, and it, it was not at the same caliber as previous ones. I think six, seven, and eight are great. Well, five, six, seven, and eight are all great examples of like really cool last final chase sequences. Even, I'll give it to the submarine in eight. The submarine is kind of cool in eight. I, I like it. Mm-hmm. This one, it was kind of like, oh, that's it? Mm-hmm. That's like the big thing? I liked it. I feel like I've all I've done has been negative about this movie. I did like it, and I did enjoy it, and I obviously will buy it and rewatch it in the future. But I just think in terms of, like, the franchise, it's been like, like, it's just kind of gone a little down. I still like it. It's not well, going to you, you some of the When you ones. lose a main character, mm-hmm. it's very, very hard to recover. And I give them props for how well they've been able to mm-hmm. carry on. Because I will say that this film, for me, an outside perspective, somebody who's only seen the other ones once and some of them none, no times, it kind of like was similar vibe. Mm -hmm. But I agree with what you're saying. It lacked heart, but I think they do a decent job of preserving the feeling, I guess. I don't know. And they still hit on like entertainment value and cool action sequences Definitely. and you're going to have the family together and you can always predict that something's going to go like wrong with especially Roman or Tej and Definitely. I don't know. They always find new ways to keep it interesting and to keep it fun and to keep you invested. And I mean, I am glad that they kept going. I think if it would have ended on seven, even though it was like a very satisfying ending, I think it would have felt a little sad that like it came to the end because of that and you would have almost remembered it because it's like oh that was when Paul Walker died and then they ended it so I do kind of like that they've kept going and I like that they're still making nods to his memory and that they're not just like we're gonna pretend like Brian never existed I just I miss Paul Walker in these I really yeah should should we do any kill fuck Marys sure okay Dom Tej and Roman marry Roman kill Tej fuck Dom 
I think I'll keep that the same. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Ramsey, Letty, and Mia. Mary Ramsey, kill Letty, no offense. Fuck Mia. Okay. No, no, no. Mary Letty, fuck Ramsey, kill Mia. I love you, Mia. You're the most practical choice. <laughs> I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't kill Letty or Miss Andy. Uh, I don't know what our next episode is. We have to figure out our schedule for the rest of this month, but stay tuned for more summer fun content. Oh, wait. I think I remember what my other note was. Sorry, real quick. The soundtrack, Still Fire. <gasps> I was bopping to it. Yes. I could feel it. Like, I, at certain did points, I, I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I'm going to listen to it yeah. because and I, even the end song yeah. with him and his little son. Yeah. That was cute. Little Brian. I, did I like mean, they, they deliver in the soundtrack mm-hmm. department. They so. really do. And I'm a sucker for the moments with the party girls, too, where he just pulls up and there's all these pretty women. He's like, he's like, oh, they're on the payroll. I'm like, who's? <laughs> Dictators. <laughs> what country are you dictating? <laughs> and when he was like, your dad's going to have to ask you for allowance. I was like, okay, so you really have daddy issues. Yeah, jeez. Everyone has some sort of parental issues in this. Mm-hmm. The only way we know to go. Squad up, never roll alone. We gon' ride forever. Ride out together, ride out. That was my last note. I'm glad I remembered that before we stopped. Me too. Soundtrack great. The song during the street race. Yeah. It fit it perfect. Mm-hmm. That was okay. well. All righty. We'll see you next Thursday. Lilas. Lilas.